Hey everyone, all right, today I'm in uh, Lake City, Lake City, Florida. Stop by Wheels and Wings, talk to Herman. He's got all kinds of projects going on here today. So we'll give you a tour of Wheels and Wings and catch up with Herman on everything he's working on here. Herman Eshaus is my name. It's spelled Herman Eshaus is what uh, people say here in the U.S., so I'm listening to it. Um, I'm the owner of Wheels and Wings in Lake City, Florida, and I have Wheels and Wings is um, a Zenit Builder Assist Center, but we also do um, light sport, 100-hour inspections, condition inspections, as I am a light sport repairman. Um, dealer for Dynon, um, dealer for UL Power, um, certified Rotax Center, since recently also a Jabiru uh, Service Center. Um, I do maintenance, um, pre-buy inspections, more or less a one-stop shop for your experimental um, amateur build slash light sport aircraft. All right, so one of the things I want to highlight while I'm here I feel is very important about Herman. You see these uh, few pictures here. He comes from the background of a very interesting um, industry of kit cars. And it was over in actually another country. The Netherlands. The Netherlands, right? So he started out earlier in life building kit cars. And we'll talk about what brand of kit car this is and then how you moved into uh, kit aircraft. Yeah, we. I was, I had one of the largest professional shops in Europe selling uh, Shelby Cobra replicas and Lotus Super 7 replicas, uh, later on also GD40s and Daytona Coupes, um, from England mainly, and uh, in the end um, we started importing Superformance uh, replicas uh, made in South Africa because we had a demand for the, for the upside of the market, and flying was my hobby. So. I was a, a crate engine dealer for Jack Rao, so I, we, we traveled to the, to the States a lot of times, went to a lot of parties uh, and a lot of meetings with Shelby, with, with Barrett Jackson, and we, we had a good time, but flying was the ultimate thing, so I, I, always, I always wanted to do something different, so I said, well, I moved to the U.S., and uh, maybe I can do airplanes. So that's, I mean, he has a, a long history of the kit industry, just with four wheels instead of now three. Two. Three, yes, two, two, two sometimes, but yeah. yeah, that's where the wheels and wings come from because yeah. the wheels is related to the kit cars. Yeah. Additionally to that, um, on the search to having a higher level, that's why we also offer the two-week to taxi for Zenit. So somebody who doesn't have the time but they have the money, uh, we do like a rolling chassis in a plane and in two weeks we get them to taxi. So we offer that nice. too. Yeah. So being that you are a UL Power dealer, Rotax dealer and Jabiru dealer now, um, but we've got a UL Power as an example here. Um, how does this arrive? And as a kit, what comes in the kit and how much extra do you have to do to be able to install it to the point where we see it right now? Actually, not that much. The engine comes very well pre-assembled, so it's, uh, it's more or less ready to go on the, on the engine mount immediately. You drill the engine mount to the airframe and then you mount the engine on the engine mount. Um, a couple of fuel pumps on the firewall your battery, your contactors, and then you make your um, plates for your uh, coils on both sides. You, you, we make the, the coil um, the ignition wires need to be cut to length. Um, and all, all cooler, some all cooler lines, but it's, uh, we do it with, in a week. With, if, with the customer assistance, we, we can have the engine on and hooked up in a week. It's, it's really straightforward, actually. Uh, then, of course, I'm not talking about the fuel lines coming out of the back and if you do a header tank or not, that's, that's fuselage base. But engine-wise, uh, firewall forward, it's just really straightforward. All right, so one of the things that Herman does here is uh, the Builder Assist program um, that he has outlined. And could you explain to them how that works? I think there's a couple different options from Zenith as far as where it starts. But how do you like to walk through that? What does that look like for your customers once you get a kit here? Mostly, um, when when the customer is, uh, is contacting me for help, is when they are mainly done with their airframe. It's because Zenit they have um, they building and supplying a really good kit with with good instructions. So uh, the customer in general can finish the airframe by themselves at home pretty well. But once 
the wings need to come on, the cables need to be made, uh, the wires need to come in, then it's getting all, everything has been put together and that's where it can get overwhelming for the first time builder. So, so you're, you're just before what we call the 90% done, 90% to go stage. More or, less, yeah. more or less when people come to you and say, hey, this is getting a little bit complicated or I'm not so confident at this point forward, can you help out? Correct, correct. Okay. But on the other side of that, I've been assisting numerous times to get a kit going quicker. So build wings or do a fuselage, uh, a tail. So it's it's all custom, it's all tailor-made. If, if we are here, actually what I try to do, and I do it myself, is whatever the customer needs, I'll try to make it work. It's like a customized package. But 75% um, is, as I just said, they come in, I got a 24-foot enclosed trailer out next door, and we drive out all over the East Coast mainly. If they need transportation, having it picked up, we have it all laid out to, to pick it up and get it here to Lake City. The majority of the time, this kit is essentially enough of a, I don't want to say plug and play, but Clico and play maybe, yeah. that uh, they can figure out the metal work part of it, but then they come to you again, the, the finishing touches of whether it's wiring, um, rigging, which yes, is a very important a part of the last yes. bit of, yeah. of building, right? Yeah. And yeah. of course, avionics, which is avionics. part of wiring. Yeah, part of wiring. And then we uh, we work a lot with pre-made cables and we do, we're a dealer for Dynon, but we also are not opposed to install Garmin or um, Grand Rapids or, or MGL. It's, uh, again, customer has a certain idea and we make it work. That's, that's the, cause the, the, the end goal is to get the plane finished and to get the customer flying, um, preferably faster than slower. And most of them, they have been sitting on it for a little while and then finally um, get to a point that say, well, we need help, we wanna have it done. And here we are. Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Avionation at AvionationUSA.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. But as you said, we focus on Zenit because we, we've been working together with Zenit I, it's almost since 2013, 14, and we started to build it assist about 2016. So a good long with, while. Yeah, with the support from, from Sebastian and Roger and the crew in Canada, and we get along very well, and we, I might say we earned our credit, so we're allowed even to wear the Zenit shirts and host the, the boots <laughs> with them at Oscars. They let you wear the shirt. Yeah, they, well, you have to pay your dues <laughs> for that, but you know, it's... it's um, That's better than have to pay, I guess, to wear the shirt. Well, we, we take a lot of harassment <laughs> sometimes from, from <laughs> but that's uh, it's a joke but no it's uh yeah so we we you can find us at at the major shows in the zenith booth and uh we're mo we're mainly uh, promoting the zenith uh brands all right so uh different camera angle here but to showcase this is a, a newer option from zenith or well, partially because the seat belts are have changed and then the seats where to get these seats and what do you think about this new um, it's more of a three-point than a four-point harness. Yes, um, in, in I would say in every um, plane we assist uh, finishing, I highly recommend getting the new Super Duty option. Is to get the three-point in. It really in, improves the, the strength of your roof here, but it gives a nice uh, point to attach your seat belts. And then I either use the Crow wide seat belts or the, the narrow ones. Um, works. It's it's really cool. It, it's pretty heavy, but it's it's it it's really wide, so you're not getting split in half if something bad happens, which we of course don't want to. The seats are made by Robert Lemke in uh, in Germany. Um, these are very high quality leather with uh, 
in Europe we call it Alcantara, but it's like a, a synthetic faux um, material. It's just, you can see the stitching, it's, it's really high quality, well, well done. Um, the side panels etc are not installed in here because um, the customer is starting to uh, his fly off time uh, after next week so we, we decided to leave it out for now. You are in fact a, a Dynon dealer here. That is correct. And uh, I've seen a couple here which will pan around get some uh, b-roll of the different uh, aircraft that you've built. But you seem to like this layout it looks like. You got uh, one that's a 10 inch screen. Yes. And then uh, with the radios either above or the side but is that, I guess, a popular option? People the, are wanting just the one screen? This this is my, the, the popular option. In this case, the customer definitely wanted a uh, glove box. Um, a lot of times uh, we do a second seven inch screen in this, but it's getting really full in the narrow uh, uh, stall panel. That's right, this it, has a, a narrow panel compared to the cruiser. Yes, the cruiser is a wider panel. Uh, gives you more options to uh, to, to get dual screens in there. Dual 10 inch uh, would really been pushing it. Um, but but like we got here, we got the radio, we got the, uh, the, oh, the intercom and we have an autopilot uh, and we have the button, the, the knob panel to do a quick adjustment for your heading, track, altimeter. But I really like that instead of give, going into the menu behind uh, and then switch it up here. If you have one screen and no no knob panel, um, you have to go into one of your buttons to do the adjustment. Like on the right side, we got the map here. And you don't have to deviate from using that. So as a quick grab, we have some uh, real buttons, real knobs to play with yes. there to uh, yes. make adjustments in, to. In this case, uh, you only see three circuit breakers, which is for the, I, I turned off the ECU to have not the fuel pump uh, running. Uh, but we got fuel pump 1, fuel pump 2 and an ECU for the UL power. But here you only see switches because we use the VPX uh, remote uh, breaker panel for this. That's what I was going to ask. I know that's available now, which is yes. a, uh, what do they call it, solid state breaker system? Yes, that, yeah. And then um, I'm going to turn the ECU on so you hear the pumps because my uh, VPX was giving an error. So we go to display, go to VPX and Uh, now after 15 seconds it turns it off. Um, here you can operate either your electronics, but this is also the breaker. So you see the power plug is on, if you touch it then the power plug is off. Um, the transponder is on, you, you can turn it off, but it also gives you the total amperage the system is using while it's now powered up. We nice. have uh, two batteries, we operate the uh, al alternator with it, once we start it up we uh, manually adjust the, the, well it's not an al alternator, it's the rectulator rectifier, but at least uh, we, there is an over voltage device which we actuate by this, so you, you have it in your checklist. If you could list a couple things that people have asked you to come alongside them to do, they don't feel comfortable or confident in doing, and they want somebody experienced like you doing it with them or for them. Yeah, the, the, the one of the things is the cabin frame. Uh, you want to have that straight and you want to have that square in, in the airframe. So that is sometimes, uh, a, there is a saying, just drill the hole, but you have to measure twice before you drill once. And then um, the landing gear is, um, can be a, a point because you have to drill the holes in there. Uh, some people, they get a little bit apprehensive to get that all squared away and, and get it out straight. Um, the, the, the clear shield and with, in combination with the firewall because the firewall is also pretty permanent once you drill the hole and, and get, it, get it all riveted in. So I would say that's, and yeah, controls. Controls is also pretty important. You don't want to mess that up. Um, I would say that's, that's sometimes what I see in, in general. If we go to the wings, it's if you have to drill the main spar you, uh, to be 100% uh, level. And that, um, yeah, that is a little bit of, of a sometimes a hesitance to, to get those holes drilled because those are quite a bit and that you want to have that uh, done right. Um, we just did a Rotax 912 IS on a uh, 750 cruiser. Um, actually, that plane won the People's Choice Award at the fly in in uh, Mexico uh, last month. That was actually um, quite a lot more. Um, 
complex with, uh, with the dual computer setup, with a fuse box, uh, a lot of wires need to be made. Um, I would say that takes about double the time for, for that, that setup. A beautiful setup, by the way. It's, um, but it's too bad they only come out with 100 horsepower. Otherwise, the Rotax would definitely be uh, a big competitor to the UR Power for their weight. Uh, but we, we enjoyed doing it. It was, and the, and the plane flies, uh, flies beautifully, uh, of course. So I, I would say Rotax is more complex, more complicated. Uh, you got also uh, liquid cooling, so you got all the water lines need to be made. You need to install a radiator. Um, the cowling from the firewall forward to, uh, totally need to be uh, modified and parts need to be fiberglassed in while the UR power cowling is, is light and, and very well done. The Rotax one is a little bit more complicated, which I'm not opposed to because I work by the hour so it, it gives me more payouts. Uh, that's, that's, that's the benefit of that. But it's, um, yeah, that was, that was a handful and, and um, the cowling was, was heavier than, than actually the UR power cowling is. So probably the most important thing after going through all this uh, and introducing Herman to the world, if you haven't met him already, is how did they get in touch with you to talk about your services and, and bringing something here to Lake City? It's, um, it's really easy. Um, I do a lot by phone, which is 386-690-4239 on the back of my shirt. <laughs> so, or uh, easier. Hey, he is answers the phone every time I call him. Yeah. So. so, and if you don't, then I'll call you back. I really call back. But and then online uh, via an email at info at wheelsandwings.net, and the website is www.wheelsandwings.net. Um, and I'm on Facebook, not very actively, and I got all kinds of other accounts uh, on social media, but I'm not so good with that. So, um, Facebook. Email, phone, I think that's about it. Well guys, I just wanted to uh, share this with you, what Herman is doing here, not necessarily just to promote his business, but to promote aviation in general because he is involved in so many different facets of it with the different engine options of Jabiru, Rotax, and UL Power, and also being a licensed repair uh, station. Obviously he's knowledgeable, so he is adding value to our aviation community and the fact that he lives in a really cool place of Cannon Creek Air Park in, right. in, uh, in Lake City, really close to the interstate. This is a, a beautiful community. If you've never been, uh, I, would, I don't want to send the invitation, but maybe Herman can send the invitation out to you to, to visit sometime. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. Check out our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.